So let me welcome us to today's session on the MSME Clinic. Okay, so MSME Clinic, it's a forum where we deal with those issues that it relates to the micro, small, medium enterprises, MSME. Please don't always forget that, okay? If you are a businessman, okay, so you are either micro in nature or small or medium trying to grow to a large organization. So the Federal Executive Council just released a document they call the MSME guideline. I will urge you to try to get that document to see how you fit in and how you can relate with the policies of government and how you can transform from where you are now. One of the key highlights of that document is that today we have been able to bring in another acronym into the, the MSME space. So today you now have the NMSME, which means nano, micro, small, and medium enterprises. Okay? So by definition, you should look for some of our previous pre uh, presentation where we try to define who a nano enterprise is, who a micro enterprise is, who a small enterprise is, and who um, a medium enterprise is. So once you get a clear definition of what they are, so wherever by definition you find yourself, what it means is that you are going to, as from a nano, try to become micro. As micro, you try to become uh, uh, small, from small to medium. So before I go into trying to talk about the eight ways to sort out the MSMEs, either by the MSMEs themselves or by the government as a regulatory uh, body, okay, uh, there are some things that we have lost in essence and there is need for me to bring it to the notice of the world today as it has to do with Nigeria as a nation. Prior to now, there used to be the Ministry of Commerce and industry, okay? So when you say the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, today we have lost that. Because a certain minister came on board, and what did he do? He changed the name from Commerce and Industry to Trade and Investment. The essence of Commerce and Industry was to identify those MSME, build their commerce, and transform them to industry for them to be able to trade at the end of the day. But today, it's been transformed from the Ministry of Commerce and Industry to Trade and Investment. So that represents a loss to me. Okay? So, and indeed, to so every concerned party, and there's a need for us to look at that. One of those things that we have also lost is the NPC, which has to do with National Planning Commission. Okay? So today, National Planning Commission has transformed from planning to the Ministry of Budget and what? <coughs> Ministry of, of Budget and Economic Planning. So we have also lost a major uh, uh, transformation that we're trying to achieve with national planning. What was national planning doing in those days? For every, com uh, ministry, uh, uh, every ministry, every MDA was to relate their plan to the NPC, National Planning Commission, to be able to see that whatever uh, aspiration that they had meet up with that national planning at the end of the day. But today, we have also uh, lost that. And there's a need for anyone listening to us today who, you know, this matter touches, for us to be able to go back. We need to have a Ministry of Commerce and Industry. We need to have a National Planning Commission at the end of the day. So now, there are eight um, problems that the average MSMEs face, and I'm going to be looking at them in a two-part series. Number one, we look at the limited access to finance. Okay, when you talk to most MS MSMEs, they will tell you that finance is our greatest headache. Number two, inadequate infrastructure. Okay, and this is where government plays in. Okay, you have regulatory and policy barrier as number three, then limited uh, market access. Okay, then you talk about low adoption of technology, 
skill gaps, inconsistent power supply, and lack of uh, business um, uh, support services. These are eight problems that confront our MSMEs on a daily basis. So today, we're going to be extraying each of them, knowing what those problems are, and offering the solutions to them. So at the end of the day, as an MSME, as government trying to transform a nation, then you will be able to see how these problems could be addressed one by one. So we move on to part one. Part one has to do with the first four, looking at limited access to finance, inadequate infrastructure, regulatory and policy barriers, and of course, you look at limited market access. Those are the first four I will be treating right now. So let me start with number one, which has to do with limited access to finance. So like I will always say, every time you try to do a survey, one of the things you quickly find out is that most entrepreneurs will tell you that if I have more money today, half of my problem is solved. I agree with them. But that is entrepreneurship 101. By the time you move to advanced entrepreneurship, you will discover that money is not much of a headache for an entrepreneur. You're talking about things like ide ideation, idea, the original idea for you to be able to finance. And you can find today that a lot of people looking for who have money, they are looking for what enterprise to go into. And you now have a situation where you have people who have idea who do not have money. So what does that connote? You have somebody who is beating drum, and you have somebody who wants to dance. So by the time the two of them come together, you will see that they will now have a seamless, rhythm, rhythmful uh, uh, orchestration that will be able to transform uh, whatever enterprise that they go through to go into. So many MSMEs okay, struggle to secure loans and financial services due to stringent banking requirements. We are talking about issues of lack of collateral. What about high interest rates? So these are things that you have. Today we have in Nigeria some of the biggest banks that are now global banks. But it's difficult to get uh, uh, loans from these institutions. They talk about things like KYC, know your customers, okay? So it's easier for you to open an account. The moment you want to, you know, take a loan to grow your enterprise, it becomes a major headache for these institutions. So this restricts the ability to be able to expand, purchase new equipment, and to be able to invest in innovations. Today, I urge government, you ought to create something called the innovation funds. Okay, there are people, crazy people across Africa who have crazy ideas. The only issue and problem that they have is that they don't have that basis for them to be able to transform at the end of the day. So, things like grants, okay, not everybody needs loan. Some people actually need grants to be able to kickstart what they have. And one of the problems that critical problems that we have today is the ability to create employment. Today, people are trying to jackpot across the nation. Okay, living in mass. You have had a lot of family now li living. The real simple reason that they live is that they find employment in those places that they go. Okay, so you have the issue of you know uh, banking requirement too stringent. You have the issue of that lack of collateral today. You know the land, you know, is uh, belongs to the state government because they're the one that issued the CFO. But you have this, uh, the federal government that superintend. Uh, so pretend over those um, uh, land matters. So these are ironies, those are contradictions that we need to fix as a notion. So what are the solutions? Okay? Microfinance institutions, microfinance bank, digital lending platform. CBN has put all this in place, but are they actually doing the lending? So CBN should be able to drill down to be able to tell us that, look, when it comes to small loan that, and retail uh, loans, those should be left to the comfort of microfinance institutions, microfinance banks. They are specialists in that. Then the commercial banks should focus on large loans. Okay? So what about the issue of using alternative form of uh, collaterals? Okay? You have a system today uh, for institutions as big as Dangote. They don't actually require collateral now. So you talk about inventory financing. Okay? You talk about future receivables. These are you know, innovative products that the banking sector ought to have for them to be able to, you know, lend to the MSME space. Today, I can tell you that one of the greatest problems we have is that really 
our banks do not understand the MSME on how to, you know, uh, be able to give them loan. You also have the issue of CBN's regulation being too stringent. They are telling you that, look, as a bank regulated by the central bank, you must, of course, have, uh, for every loan that you give out, you must have a collateral to be able to back at. So the MSMEs, they do not have this collateral. So you must look for other ways <clears throat> to be able to finance them without necessarily having them to ask for collateral. So we're looking at solutions to financing. You, you look at things like government bank guarantee scheme. Okay? We had a certain institution called the NISA, Nigerian Incentive Risk Sharing Based System for Agricultural Lending. NISA. They were supposed to be guarantee issuing institutions. But today, along the line, there was a loss of force. Then you have to talk about things like low uh, interest rates uh, program by the government. And of course, I must warn that governments should not be in the business of giving loans directly because they are not trained for that. The financial institution, talking about the microfinance bank, the microfinance institution, the fintech industry, the commercial banks, they are thoroughly uh, uh, schooled and trained to be able to do that. So having looked at uh, finance as the number one problem, we try to see how you know, we can get finance. There are quite a number of ways uh, MSMEs can get finance. One of them is to look for finance from family and friends, okay? Then true savings. Then, of course, once you have all this in place, you can leverage on them to be able to ad address those relevant institutions for you to be able to get those uh, necessary funding for you to be able to drive your, your system. Number two challenge is the inadequate infrastructure. And again, who provides those infrastructure? This is where government needs to play big. Okay? Rwanda had a genocide. Today, Rwanda is competing in terms of infrastructure for MSME with the rest part of the world, Europe, the Americans, and the big tigers. Rwanda is competing. Why can't the rest of Africa be able to compete? Okay? So poor infrastructure, including um, talking about uh, 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 energy supply, Okay, it's a major problem. Inadequate transportation networks and, of course, weak internet access. These are infrastructures that MSMEs require to be able to uh, transform. You talk about increasing uh, operational cost, and, of course, this affects productivity at the end of the day. I, myself, as an MSME myself, I know that I face some of these uh, problems, like electricity supply. Today, they are talking about band one, band two, band three. All these things are not necessary. What the people are looking for is 24 hours um, energy supply. Okay? So once you have a 24 hour energy supply, I will now choose which, um, how to operate. If I work in an industrial zone, for example, and I know that I need power between uh, early hours of morning and in the evenings. Okay? So when I get home, and I know from the comfort of my home, talking about residential area, I will need power supply from probably in the evening to early hours of morning. So we need to actually grade our cities to have industrial hubs and also to have residential hubs. But today we have a mixed culture where you cannot even di uh, differentiate where the industries are and where the residential areas are. Okay? Transportation network is a major, major headache today. We have an... Uh, 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 from where we are broadcasting to you today, which has to do with federal capital territory, there is today no robust uh, transportation uh, system, which is a major headache. Internet, access to internet, robust access to internet. The youth today rely heavily on internet to be able to work from any part of uh, uh, the world where they are. But again, you enter cities like Dubai today from the, from the airport, you are connected to a wireless uh, uh, internet, and you are able to start browsing to start relating with the rest part of the world. Inadequate um, then, then operational uh, cause, as it has to do with trying to increase productivity at the end of the day. So what are the solutions to the infrastructure development? Number one, you have to invest in reliable electricity. OK, today I am told that ABA is now on a 24 hours uh, power supply, which is a bit of good news. So why can't we have a situation where we have a reliable electricity supply? The road network. So today, you cannot transport eggs in Nigeria across a distance of two to three, four hours, because again, you must experience a breakage. Internet connectivity through public-private partnership, PPP. 
These are things that we need to revive to be able to operationalize and begin to get our nations right. The government should incentivize all grid energy solution. Okay, we have a lot of um, uh, sunlight today in places like Sokoto and in this uh, Sahara region. Okay, the desert region, they have quite a number of uh, sun. So we look at all grid energy solutions like the solar to the uh, power outages. Today, I'm happy to announce to the world the office where we are broadcasting for today, we are on, you know, we've been able to connect ourselves to the national grid. We are on off-grid using solar and inverter to be able to power our office. Today, light does not really go off in the place where we are broadcasting from today. And we encourage most and other MSMEs to begin to look at this. It's a huge capital outlay, especially at the beginning. But gradually, you can begin to acquire uh, this technology little by little until you are able to, uh, you know, be able to transform. This will help you to be able to bring down the cost, operational cost of you doing business on a daily basis. So we talk about number three now, which has to do with regulatory and policies barrier. And this is where, again, government comes in. You have complicated regulatory procedures, high taxes, and of course, inconsistent uh, governance in uh, government policies, which often make it difficult for MSMEs to be able to operate smoothly. So the lack of business-friendly uh, policies creates an unnecessary bureaucratic delays across all structure of where the MSMEs operate. So today, you have government. You, we mentioned the issue of National Planning Commission. Okay, so whatever everyone is doing, whether you are in the public sector or you are also in the private sector, you must, all the plan that you have must dovetail into a national plan. And of course, today, there is no longer National Planning Commission, and National Planning Commission has transformed to Ministry of Budget and uh, Economic Planning, which has lost the essence of a national plan at the end of the day. So you have regulators also becoming players. Okay, so these are transition that we have witnessed as a nation and is a major headache to us today. Today, and then, uh, uh, prior, prior to now, NMPC used to be a regulator. Okay, so men are now a player. So there is confusion as who is actually a regulator now, who the players are. And, you know, the private sector are held by the jugular. What are the solutions? We need to have policy reforms to be able to look at that. We've mentioned that. We have lost Ministry of Commerce and Industry today. We have lost the National Planning Commission. So there must be a situation where re the regulatory reform to look at all these critical matter with a view to try to solve them at the end of the day. Simplifying the business registration process. CAC, that's where they come in. We should be able to have 24 hours registration process. If I want to upgrade my CAC now from a 1 million to a 10 million company, it should be seamless at the end of the day. And this can be done through introducing tax breaks, okay, for MSMEs, okay? So the government is, you know, trying to uh, issue palliatives. And one of the ways I feel that you can address the MSMEs palliative uh, uh, methodology is to look at tax-paying MSMEs. Give them a tax break as an incentive which can help to reduce uh, administrative uh, uh, burdens that borders on these MSMEs. Today, I'm an MSME myself, okay? But uh, we have problem of trying to see how we can get ourselves, our staff, into a robust transmission scheme that will benefit them and ultimately help us to be able to remain in business at the end of the day. So, like I mentioned to you, we're looking at uh, two parts. Uh, <clears throat> looking at part one and part two. So, we're still on part one. This time around, we want to look at limited market access. And I said to every entrepreneur, please, do not start any business if you are not sure about the market, okay? The market is at the tail end of the value chain, but must be considered first before you start any enterprise going forward, okay? So limited market assets. Today, we have a population of about 200 million Nigerians who must eat at least twice a day even though it's becoming even much more difficult for them to eat once a day now. So MSME often lack 